Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Hashem, Kakodash. Next, double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of Great Millstone, the one that taught me the 100% truth according to the Bible. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere items. Keep pushing, keep believing, keep the faith of God's for people here for a bear. Repent. That's what the Lord wants us to do. Repent, confess our faults. Well, what does the word repent mean? It means to turn back. To turn back sorrowful for the things that we did. We, we have did a lot of wrong, man. We have caused, caused a lot, whole lot of hurt, man. The Hebrew Israelites, Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, we must repent. You want to make it up out of this hellhole called Babylon? Or wherever you at, scattered throughout the four corners of heaven, you want to be delivered? You want to even have a chance of being delivered, man? To a chariot, what they're going to call UFOs, we must repent. I just woke up from a nap, and that's the first thing that popped in my head. As soon as I open my eyes, stay repenting. And repent not for just the, the things, the sins that you committed on this side, but the ones in your former life. Um, Apostle Gabar and the rest of the other apostles, they always go into that. Don't just pray to be forgiven for the things that you did in this life, but pray, you know what I'm saying? That you are, that you are forgiven for the things that you did in your former life, man. Because we done did some shit, man. You know, we we you don't even know want to know what you have did, man. Because you already know the thing that you did on this side, but you only want to know the thing that you did in your former life. So what again? Acts chapter three, verse nineteen. And these lessons that we do only for the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of your so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man, right? This is Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins, what is sin, we're going to prove it according to the Bible. Everything we say, we back it up with a scripture, man. We're going to prove what sin is according to the Bible. First John chapter 3, verse 4. First John chapter 3, verse 4. Because we're repenting for, for my sins, right? This is what sin is. First John chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committed sin, transgressive also the law for sin is the transgression of the law so what is sin the breaking of the laws statutes and commandments of the bible we made an oath we made an agreement with Yahweh Bashimel Shah, aka a covenant with our power by way of Moses to keep the laws statutes and commandments of the bible we didn't do it which is all the, um, the creature was subject unto vanity anyway was subject unto sin we weren't created to be perfect on this side. But at the same time, do, do we go off? Do we make void the law? Just because we have faith? Nah. We keep the law. We establish the law to the best of our ability. And what it say? The wages of sin is death. So breaking the laws of the Bible will lead to you getting put to death, man. If you constantly keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, you, you don't never want to repent. You don't ask for forgiveness. You ain't trying to turn back from your wickedness. It, it will eventually lead to you being put to death, man. All right? So once again, First John chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So let's go back. So we want to repent from our sins, man. You know? We don't want to keep swimming in sin, swimming in iniquity, man. Because eventually it will catch up to you. Plus, in the book of Ezra, which I'm going to get at the ninth chapter, we gotta, we gotta, see, everything we're going through now, we gotta fight mosquitoes. You know what I'm saying? We gotta bury people for jobs. We're catching pure hell. Everything that we're going through right about now is because of the things that we did wrong. You know? You gotta admit to yourself, Israel, that you did wrong. That's the first steps of recovery anyway, man. You know what I'm saying? An addict, when he goes to therapy, the first steps of therapy, you know what I'm saying, is admitting that you have a problem, man. And that's the majority of our people. They don't want to admit that they have a problem. But the whole let we will admit that we have, we had, we have, we have problems and things that we need to overcome and we need help, man. We pray to you, how about you, We need help, man. We need the foul bodies and you hear the bird, you know what I'm saying? Look, I'm um, agreeing with me. Through the spirit of you, how about you, Look, it's all, everything is all spiritual, right? So once again, Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. 
you repent and you become a new creature. You be born again pretty much, you know? You stop doing the things that you used to do. It says, um, that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence from the presence of the Lord. Because the Lord is about to come back. You don't want to be found, you know what I'm saying? Wicked, you know what I'm saying? I mean, all our righteousness is as, as filthy rags. I'm getting bit by ants, so before we will get through this, we, we got to deal with everything right about now, all kind of elements. We're fighting against the grain for real, for real, man. In these bodies, man. All because we went to hell off. But look, there's hope, right? There's hope. How can you get your, your acts together, right? Let's get this right quick. This is on Psalms. And it's a blessing right about now. No, say, look, us, us receiving this word, it won't nothing that we did good. You know what I'm saying? Because all of us was into all kind of nonsense before we woke up, before the Lord woke us up to this truth. You know? No man on earth, you know what I'm saying, was just doing everything right to receive the word. No. We received the word because of the Lord, of the Lord's mercy, pretty much. Because of his will, right? So this is Psalm chapter 119, verse 9. Where it all shall a young man cleanse his way? You want to know how you can get yourself right? How you can clean yourself up? Right? Where with all shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Because right about now, you know what I'm saying? We're being washed by the word. We're being baptized, which the word baptized means um, submerge. You know I'm saying? We're submerging ourselves in this water, a.k.a. this word. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're baptized by the word now, man. All right? When John the Baptist was on the scene, he used to baptize um, us in water. But when Lord Yahweh came on the scene, what he even called it Jesus, you know what I'm saying? Look, we started being baptized by the word. I want to get we're gonna get that, Lord willing. Once again, um, Psalm chapter 119, verse 9, verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. So how can you get baptized? One might ask. How can I be baptized? By taking heed to the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Let's see if I can get that. Going right back to our first John. The first steps of recovery is, is, is admitting that you had a problem, man. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Bear with me, Israel. Bear with me. This is St. Mark chapter 1, verse 8. Just proving that now we're being baptized by the word. We don't have to be actually dumped in no water. You know? We're baptized once again, which means submerge. We submerge ourselves within this water, which is the word, right? We're going to prove it. St. Mark chapter 1, verse 8. I indeed baptize you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And what's the Holy Spirit? We're going to prove it. So that was John the Baptist, you know what I'm saying? Baptizing us with water. But it says what again? St. Mark chapter 1 verse 8. I indeed, I indeed have baptized you with water. But he, Lord Yahweh shall, shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So we're going to read what the Holy Spirit is. St. John chapter 6 verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So what are we being baptized with? The word, man. The word that take heed to the word now. We got Jake all in church, you know what I'm saying, being dumped in some, in some water. And I don't even, I ain't even going to, I'm, I'm going to keep it PG. I'm not going to really get graphic on <laughs> what's in the water. But you got men and women being baptized in that water. You got women on their monthly cycle being, being submerged in the same water that they put the men in. Come on, man. Come on, man. You, you, you know that ain't right. You know that ain't right. So let's get some more. On just us being baptized, you know what I'm saying, by the word. You know? It says, how can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereunto according to thy word. Let's get another one. Got a couple precepts that I want to bring out. This is, um, First Peter. I got a couple of them. This is First Peter chapter, um, 1. Let's see. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23, and it bleed, and it reads, being born again. You know, becoming a new creature, right? Being born again, right? Not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. By the word, you see? By the word of the Most High. 
Yahweh Bashimel Shai, which is this Bible, which look, look, which liveth and abideth forever, man. This is living water right here, man. This book is actually lit. This these words, this book actually lives, man. Straight up. And these words can cleanse your can mend your ways and cleanse your ways. The word of scripture tells the men our ways. But this word can cleanse your ways, man. This word can clean you up. This word has cleaned us up, man. You know? Not actually being dumped in some arms. Um, once again, I'm gonna keep it PG. Some um some water at a lake. You know what I'm saying? Or a pool. Or a place on um, a church didn't rent it. You know what I'm saying? Or you go to the back of the church and they got some water back there and they just dump you in it. Yeah, it makes you feel good. But that ain't how you get baptized. We just read how you get baptized according to the word. Let's see what else. We go we go Luke Luke saying the same thing that Mark said. The same Luke chapter three. Because remember, the Lord punished us less than what our iniquities deserve. All of us should be dead. All of us should be dead as own no what, man. This is on St. Luke chapter 3. Verse 16, John answered, John the Baptist, right? Saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water. In the river, right? The one mightier than I cometh. The latches, the latch of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Which, which, which the scripture tell you, you know what I'm saying? That this world is a fire. This world is a fire. Right? Let's prove that right quick. Let's just prove that right quick. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 14, right? No, Jeremiah chapter 5. Verse 14. Let's just prove that this world is a fire. And we're going to prove that it's, a, it's water again. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 5. Verse um, 14. And it reads, Wherefore thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Shai, power of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. You know what I'm saying? So this word is a fire, right? And this people would, and it shall devour them, man. So this word is water and fire, man. Where's that other one that, um, uh, what is that, um, is it in Hebrews? And I'm just flowing in the spirit, man. It, it, look, we, mu we must repent, Israel. We must repent. Turn back soft and once again to your how about Shemel Shai. Look, look we, we messed up, Israel. We, we truly did. Remember, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. And I'm just looking up something. Let's see. Listen to this. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse, uh, let's see. 22 let us draw near what they look with a true heart a true heart mean a pure mind right a pure mind right and full assurance of faith because this, this this whole thing is based upon faith right and faith having our hearts meaning our minds sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water which is this word man you see this is what cleanses us man this is what cleans us up, this word, man. So we must take heed to it. You know, and Lord willing, once again, the, the elect of the nation of Israel is edified, man. Got a couple more scriptures, and then I'm going to read a couple more scriptures on repent, on repentance. This is St. John. Come on now, Aunt. I'm let you keep biting me now. St. John chapter 15. St. John chapter 15, verse 3. Look, look, now ye are clean through the word. This Lord Yahweh should I speak what you can call it Jesus, right? It's red letter. What, what the Lord say again? St. John chapter 15, verse 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you, man. So what makes us clean? What cleans us up? This word, man. You know? Look, look, drink up. Dive into it, man. Submerge yourself into it, man. Straight up, man. And that, that was a bad one right there. That was a bad one. Let's see. Let's go to Ephesians. This is Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, and it reads, 
Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, man. This word, this word is all we need too. It's all we need. This is all we ever needed, man. We thought we needed other things in this life to make us feel good. But it was the word the whole time. That's why the scripture says, I'm happy as a man. The get of knowledge, the find of wisdom, understanding, man. It's truly a blessing, man. I mean, I find myself speechless sometimes of how thankful I am to Yahweh Bashi Shai for blessing me with this word, for sending true teachers, man, and directing me right to him, man. You know, well, once again, it, won't, we won't do, it ain't nothing that we did to receive this word. It was of the Lord's tender mercy, man, that we received this word. Um, let's see. I think it's one in James that I wrote down. Let's see right quick. Bear with me. James, let's see. Listen, listen, this is James chapter 1, verse 18. Of his own will begot he us with the word of truth. Of his own will. It was the will of Yahweh by Shemel Shah. It wasn't nothing that we did good. It ain't like we were doing the right thing before we got this word. Pretty much every last one of us was in the world. I mean, you, you might have some brothers, you know, saying that, you know, was reading the word and in church and things of that nature. Well, the church wasn't teaching us nothing anyway, man. All right? They were just reading the scriptures. They didn't understand what they was reading. You know what I'm saying? But now we understand what we're reading through teachers, through the spirit of Yahweh, by Shemel Shah. But the word says one again, James chapter 1, verse 18. Let's see. Matter of fact, I'm going to start at 17. James chapter 1, verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. You know what I'm saying? This truly is a gift. It truly is a blessing. And coming down from the Father of lights, with whom is no vari variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures, aka his creations. Lord willing, we of those first fruits, man. Lord willing, man, starting off with the head apostles slash elder bishops of great millstone, the elders up under them to the newest brother that's coming into this faith, man, that believes in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. You know? Hey, I want to jump down to 21. James chapter 1, verse 21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness of superfluity. Let us lock in. Lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. And receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. Taking heed to this word, how can a man cleanse his way? How can you clean yourself up? How can you get your act together? By taking heed to this word. The Lord, look, the Lord made it plain for us, man. You know? This is what heals us anyway, this word. This is what heals us, Israel, this word. I'm going to go to Wisdom of Solomon right quick. This is Wisdom of Solomon 16. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16. Let's see. Listen to this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16, verse 12. For it was neither earth nor Mollifying plaster that restored them to health. But thy word, man, what, what healed us? What brought us back to health? This word. That's a bad scripture, too, man. And I, and I just found this precept, you know what I'm saying, a couple of days back. You know what I'm saying? Now, like you read, you know what I'm saying, you skip over certain things, but then the Lord had you read it again, either weeks later, months later, and then you find a precept, you're like, wow, that was in there? So, once again, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16, verse 2. For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health meaning the Hebrew Israelites right but thy word O Lord which healeth all things it's the word that healed us man we were sick you know what I'm saying this word is what healed us man so God we must we must take heed to it man this is the healing agent this word man that was, that was a bad one right there Lord you know, and I'm thankful for every word, you know what I'm saying, every scripture, every lesson, 
be thankful for in Israel. You know, the Lord just wants us to repent. But the Lord got to put his spirit on you. The Lord got to, you know what I'm saying, put, if the Lord draws you to his only begotten son, the scriptures tell you that. I want to get this though. I quoted it earlier in the beginning. I want to get it though. This is Ezra in the regular um, Bible. This is Ezra chapter 9. Verse 13, we, we, we truly got to be thankful of the tenth of mercy that the Lord has been showing us, man. Straight up, man. You know what I'm saying? It's way beyond a roof over your head, the lights, water. Nah, man. The Lord blessed us with this word. And we don't even deserve it, man. We don't even deserve it. And the Lord gave us this word again. You know? Once again, it wasn't nothing that we was doing right to receive this word. You see? Um, Ezra chapter 9 verse 13 and after all that has come upon us for our evil deeds everything that we're going through now man we deserve it we deserve more you know it's a blessing that the Lord has shown us this much mercy you know all the messing up that we didn't did man it's a blessing with faith of Kyle I am locked yeah, how about Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Akakodash, Bakatah, that the Lord has even shown us this much mercy, man. You know? I mean, we kind of like, um, I wouldn't say complain, but, I mean, you know how, we, you know how it is when you catch your head, you're like, man. But then when you think about it, you know what I'm saying? You're like, damn, I deserve it all, Lord. Everything I'm going through right about now, I know I deserve it. Have mercy upon me, Lord's will. It's one thing you can say at the end of the day. Once again, Ezra chapter 9, verse 13. After all, and after all that has come upon us for, for our evil deeds, the transgression of the law, the breaking of the law, worshiping idols and everything, man, eating abominable fools, committing all the kind of um, abominable acts, you know, we went in. And for our great trespass, seeing that, I look, seeing that thou, our power, Yahweh, Look, but Hashem Yahweh Shai has punished us less than our iniquities deserve. Everything that we're going through right about now, the Lord has punished us less than what our iniquities deserve, man. The Lord, the Lord could have been killed us all, man. Saying the Lord punished us less than what our iniquities deserve, man. You know, our wickedness, man. Sin upon sin. It says, um, punished us less than what our iniquities deserve. And it has given us such deliverance as this, man. Oh, remember, receive with meekness the, the grafted word, which is able to save your soul. The Lord has given us a way, you know what I'm saying? He, he gives a cheat code to receive deliverance and salvation, man. Ain't that some? The Lord gave us the cheat code, man. Uh, on how we can get delivered, man. The hope for elect, man. You know? And yeah, that's revealed to the rest of our people, but you know what I'm saying, look, it, it, the Spirit ain't on them, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to get it. Remember the Lord, you know what I'm saying, blinded them. He don't want to convert them. He don't want to heal them, man. The Lord's healing us. So I'm going to bring out a couple more scriptures on repent. Let's see. Let's get Ezekiel right quick. We're still in the uh, blowing of the uh, memorial of the trumpets. This is a very um, spiritual month right now, man. The Day of Atonement, no sense, fastly approaching. Lord willing, we'll be forgiven for our, our wrongful thoughts, sins, and doing our sins, our transgression of the laws. We gotta pray, man. But I'm just thankful that the Lord got His Spirit on me right now to even think like I'm thinking, man. This is um, Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 6, and it reads, Therefore say unto the house of Israel, a people before us a place, right? So called Negroes, Latin, and Native American Indians. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, repent. You need to turn back softly for the things that we have did wrong, right? Repent. So it's supposed to feel bad, man, for the things that we did wrong. And we do feel bad, man. We do feel bad. Anytime we go out, we feel horrible, man. Horrible, for real, for real, man. It says, and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your face from all your abominations. What's an abomination? A wicked, filthy act, man. Look, look. Look, for every one of the house of Israel, or the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, who separated himself from me, and set up his idol in his heart, in his mind, and put up the stumbling block 
of his iniquity before his face and come into a prophet to inquire of me concerning him, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself, and I will set my face against that man, and I will make him a sign. The Lord said, I'm going to make him an example. The Israelites said, don't repent. The Lord is going to make you an example, man, of what happens when you don't repent, right? And I will make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off from the midst of my people, and ye shall know that I am the Lord, Yahweh, Rashim Yahweh Shine. That's for the Israelites that don't repent. You see? The scripture is telling us to repent. And I got so many scriptures on repentance. Let's get this though. When the Lord starts stop talking, you know you're out of that then, man. You know what I'm saying? This is um Revelation chapter 3. Verse 19, red letter, Lord Yahweh shall I speak who they even call Jesus, right? As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. The Lord said, you see me trying to correct you? I, I, I'm still, I'm, that's me loving you now. You know, me rebuking you, me reproving you, that's me still showing you love. Now look, when the Lord don't do it, when the Lord don't have brothers correct you anymore, look, the Lord getting ready to destroy you now. If you don't repent, man, the Lord wants the children of Israel to repent, but we know only the elect is going to do it. The Lord will be part of that hopeful number. Once again, um, Revelation chapter 3, verse, um, let's see. Where was I at? 19, as many as I love, I rebuke and chastise. Look, look. The Lord don't love two-thirds right about now, man. The Lord is correcting us. It's chastening us when we go off, man. What he said? Be zealous, therefore, and repent, man. You see? And repent. Let's see. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Let's see. Oh yeah, the Lord said to, to depart from evil. That's understanding, man. Second Chronicles chapter seven. Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse fourteen. Let me get this light right quick. Brother Kesha. Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse fourteen. If my people, the children of Israel, Yeshua Allah, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. And turn from their wickedness, aka repent. We gotta pray. Well, first and foremost, the Lord said He wants us to humble ourselves down. The Lord resists the proud, man. It says, and pray and seek my face. And you know the word pray goes back to beg. Beg for forgiveness and seek my face. How do you seek the Lord's face? By getting into His word. And turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Then the Lord gonna start to hear you. Then will I hear from heaven. And will forgive their sins, right? It's gonna blot it. It's like you got a uh, chalkboard full of uh, full of everything that you did wrong. You repent, you turn back. The Lord take that eraser and clean the whole board off, man. You can't beat that. You can't beat that, Israel. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal and will heal their land, man. You see? Let's keep that Baruch. Uh, let's see. I want to get another one right quick. I go to Sarat right quick. This is Sarat. Sarat chapter 17. Sarat chapter 17, verse uh, 24. Look, look. But unto them that repent. See, see. But unto them that repent, you, you turn back sorrowful. To your how about Shemel Shah, you confess your faults. You do better, man. Remember, when you know better, you do better. Or what the scripture say? Um He that knoweth to do good and do if it and do if it not, unto him is committed sin, man. You see? You know what the scripture say, do it, man. Because if not, you're committing sin. Once again, sin uh, the wages of sin is death. So Rock chapter 17, verse 24. But unto them that repent, he granted them return. But look, and comforted those that failed in patience. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. Look, 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 and offend 
let's turn again to the Most High. And we're going into repentance again, repentance again, and turn away from your iniquities, sin upon sin, wickedness, for he will lead thee out of darkness into the light of hell, which is this word. Look, look, it will say, in hate thou abominable abominations vehement, vehemently. You see? That, that, that's a powerful scripture right there, man. Return back to the Lord and forsake thy sins. Turn back, Israel. We all must repent. You know? Well, that's a that's a bad scripture right there. There's another one that I was looking at. Um Baruch. Yeah, Baruch. Let's get Baruch right quick. Baruch chapter 4 verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of the Most High. And the law that endured forever. Remember, the law is not done away with. The Lord told us to rehearse the righteous acts. Judges 5 and 11. In the place of drawn waters, they shall rehearse the righteous acts of Yahweh Bashim Shai in the land of our captivity. Right? Baruch chapter 4 verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of the Most High. Meaning the Bible and the law that endures forever. All they that keep it shall come to life. But such as leave it shall die, man. Alright? Shall die. And I got one more and then I'm going to wrap it up. I got one more. Matter of fact, my last one is in Judges. My last one is in Judges. Judges chapter 3. This is Judges chapter 3. Judges chapter 3 verse 15. But when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, Yahweh by Shimei Shai, the Lord raised up a raised them up a deliverer. You see? Ehud, the son of Gerah, a Benjamite, a man left-handed, and by him the children of Israel sent a present unto Eglon the king of of Moab, but the point being what? When Israel repented and cried unto Yahweh by Shemel Shai, then he sent them a savior, aka a deliverer. You see? And the deliverer is coming a strong one too. At that Lord Yahweh Shai, the deliverer, the savior is coming real soon, man. You can feel it in your bones, man. You know? And, and every day is a day closer. You know what I'm saying? So this place is going down, so we must stay repenting, man. You know? Blow the trumpet. Look, look, look. Um, lift up that voice. Matter of fact, Lord, let me end it off on that. Just blow that trumpet, Israel. This is um, Isaiah. This is Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And a trumpet is what? A trumpet is a loud playing instrument. The Lord has truly blessed us on this side alone, Israel. On this side alone, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh has blessed us, man. We have this word. Above all things, we look, we have the gift of faith. We, look, we got that fear. We got a healthy dose of fear. Oh, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh We repent each and every day. We beg for mercy. And we're asking Yahweh Bashim Yahweh to not only forgive us for the sins that we committed in this body, you know what I'm saying? But the sins in prior lives, man. This is going down. Once again, Isaiah 58 and 1. Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. A trumpet is a loud playing instrument. So that's why we're in the, uh, the blowing, the, um, the, memorial, the memorial of the trumpets. The blowing of the memorial of the trumpets, man. And show my people their transgressions. Which was transgression, sin. And the house of Jacob, their sins, man. All right, going right back to Titus um, 2 and 15. You know? So, Lord, one of the elect was edified, man. How, how can you cleanse your ways? By taking heed to this word, man. That's, that's the only thing the Lord wants us to do. Because if, if you don't do that, the fire coming, man. It's either, it's either be um, the fire in the water, be, be cleansed by the fire in the water, a.k.a. this word, or be pretty much cleansed by the nuclear fire. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's one or the other, and then the thing about it is scary. Look, look, you can't even choose. So I ain't going to be the dead horse. Lord, one of the elect was edified with this lesson. I know I was edified. Going over these scriptures over and over and over, man. So it's just um, a blessing. 
that the Lord has put his spirit on us to repent and turn back, man, from our wicked ways, man. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. You sleep good at night. You sleep good at night, Israel, knowing that you did the right thing, man. You see? All right, with that, Lord willing, the elect was edified. Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shai, Bahashim, Kakwadash. You know, rock a thumb, shalom.